I'm Miles. Welcome to the good news. I hope everyone had a great week. I know I did. Hi friends. Today is Tuesday, February 15th. Now let's start with the thought of the day by Gabby. Be the change that you wish to see in the world by Gandhi. And now, here's Hannah with this week's birthdays. Hannah with this week's birthdays. Today, Bruna in fifth grade celebrates her 11th birthday. Tomorrow, Grayson and Maya, both in fourth grade, celebrates their 10th birthday. On February 18th, Gabriella in fifth grade will be turning 11, and Isabel in fifth grade will be turning 10. On Sunday, February 20th, Teacher Lisa will be one year older. Donde esta Coco? Coco esta en la clase de computadoras. La ganadora de esta semana se llama Alana Marshall en la clase de la señora Alberta y teacher Alice. Felicidades. I'm back with the holidays. On Sunday, it was World Radio Day. Yesterday was Valentine's Day. Hopefully you got some good Valentines from your friends. Today is Hippo Day. Tomorrow will be Innovation Day. On Thursday, it's Random Acts of Kindness Day. So if you so maybe you can make do some random acts of kindness. On Friday, it's Soda Day. And on Saturday, it's International Tug of War Day. So maybe play Tug of War with your friends. Thanks, Colton. Now here's Nolan with the WFS Sports Updates. The wrestling squad defeated Archmere and St. Andrews in a try meet comes headed to last Thursday. Congratulations to Sloan, Keaton, Donnie, and Cole for winning their representative weight class and to the team which placed second in the DISC championship. The indoor track team is traveling to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore next weekend to compete in the DIAA State Championship meet. Go Blue! The boys' swim team went undefeated this season after defeating William Penn High School and Delaware Military Academy. The girls finished their season with an impressive, impressive six and four record. Both teams will be competed competing in the DI. A, a championship beginning on February 23rd. Thanks, Nolan. Next up, one of our fourth grade friends, Harlem, would like to share a poem and song that she wrote and performed called Poor Little Pluto. Poor little Pluto, poor tiny little planet, lonely and away the planet said he's different says he'll never make friends but he's always gonna be with me poor little pluto poor tiny little planet me no, he's lonely and away me and Pluto, we're the same. We're different, but we're both the same. Poor little Pluto, poor tiny little planet. Friendly, but never noticed. 
Pluto is alone. He barely has friends. So be friends with Pluto and me. Thanks, Harlem. The third graders just finished their mystery reading unit. Here they are to tell us about what they learned about mystery books. Mysteries have a crime. Sometimes the crime is a kidnapping like an absent author. The crime could be a robbery like in the diamond mystery. It's possible that a person could be attacked or hurt in some way in a mystery book. The crime solver is called a detective. Detectives can be of, of all ages. A detective sometimes ha has a assistant. Sherlock Holmes is a famous detective. You might have also heard of the detective Nate the Great and his cousin, Olivia Shark. In the A to Z mysteries, Dick, Josh, and Ruth Rose are the detectives. A victim is the person that the crime happened to. The victim can be stolen from, they can also be kidnapped. A suspect is a person who might have done the crime. A suspect sometimes has a reason to do it. In the, the suspects in a mystery book need to have a motive or they're not so much of a suspect. A motive means a su suspect has a reason for doing crime. There are usually witnesses in mysteries. Witnesses are people who see crimes in progress. Sometimes they work with a detective and get interrogated. Witnesses sometimes get promised something so they don't tell who they are. Mystery readers have to keep track of the clues. Some mystery readers write the clues down. Mystery readers do that to keep track of the clues, so when it comes to the mystery, they will solve it more easily. Mysteries have hidden clues. The author puts hidden clues because they don't want the reader to solve the mystery too early. You don't expect hidden clues, so you need to read carefully so you don't miss them. Hidden clues are unexpected and can be anywhere in the book. Mysteries may have clues that are red herrings. A red herring is when you think something is a clue, but it isn't. Red herrings can trick you by having false clues that you think are clues. Mysteries sometimes have unexpected twists. Unexpected twists are when things happen that you don't expect to happen. There are unexpected twists in most mystery books. It, one story with an unexpected twist is the diamond mystery. Mystery readers must read suspiciously. In a mystery, you read suspiciously so you might find clues better. You might find hidden clues or red herrings if you read suspiciously. In a mystery, it is important to read suspiciously and not like a curmudgeon. We do this so that you don't miss a thing. Ask yourself, what's the mystery here? Who's the crime solver here? Then think how mysteries go. Hi, this is one of the mystery books I really enjoy. You should read it. The Dennett mystery books are a really good series. You should read them. Mysteries, Action Author, this book um, it has red herrings, and I recommend it because it's a good book. Uh, I recommend this book because my little brother in kindergarten would like it. It's called Carl and the Mysterious Sniveller. This is a great book for kindergartners and pre k Thanks for joining us again for the Lower School Good News. Bye! Have a great week!